Hello, welcome to Beyond the Boundaries. This is a preview for the first preliminary final. That's Sydney versus North Melbourne, Friday night at ANZ Stadium. Last time these two teams met was round four at the SCG. North Melbourne won that one by 43 points. Uh, Scott Thompson got our three votes. Ben, Cunning ben Cunnington got the two. And Nick Del Santo got the one. Uh, Sydney have won three of the last five encounters. Uh, good luck to Adam Goods in his 350th game and Jack Zebel who plays his 100th. That's a big milestone. We'll take a quick look at the finals path for these two teams. Sydney beat Fremantle in week one to progress straight to the preliminary final, while North Melbourne have overcome Essendon and Geelong to meet them. The winner of this game progresses to the grand final where they will face the winner of Hawthorne and Port Adelaide while it's season over for the loser. We'll start with Sydney boys that defeated Fremantle by 24 points on the weekend. What did you, on the previous weekend, I should say. What did you make of it? Uh, yeah, they were very, very good uh, against the Fremantle Dockers. They got the fast start uh, and got on top of the Fremantle side. And I just thought all, all the way through that game, they had control of the game and yeah. uh, uh, really dominated Fremantle. Although the scoreline doesn't suggest that, uh, and at times it didn't suggest that, but I thought Sydney were in control for the majority of the game. What do you think of that? Yeah, I thought, look, um, Sydney, like you said, they got the fast start they wanted and they knew they needed against a team like Fremantle. Yep. Because Fremantle, very rarely have they come from behind scoring very quickly. So it was obvious to me that Sydney had done their homework. And that's the kind of side that Sydney is, I think. John Longmore is a very prepared individual. They assess the opponent. They go, you know, attack their weaknesses. I thought they were very good. Their midfield starred, which they always do whenever Sydney get a good win. Yep. Uh, I thought their defence was spectacular as usual. Their forward line gelled well. And it's so hard to stop a Sydney team just because all three of their you know components of their of their team are so strong that if even yeah. one of them is performing well, you know you could lose the game even if all three of yours are performing. Well, well. speaking of one aspect of the side that was definitely performing well, Dan Hanabury in the midfield, he had six tackles, finished with four score assists. He was absolutely absolutely brilliant. Well, he had a goal, four inside fifties, and twenty seven disposals to go with that as well. Yeah. So. He was just prolific. He wrapped up the ball in the midfield. And he was injured for a good part. And he, yeah. he's come back. And he's he's, out, it was out for about four weeks, I think it was. Four yeah. or five weeks. And he's just really uh, got back into some brilliant, brilliant form. And not only has he you know, replicated the form from last year, he's probably gone one up. He's probably you know, gotten even better, yeah. which is saying something. But he's probably also enjoyed the fact that he's played without JPK in the team for a couple of rounds. Another player that's true for um, Luke Parker. Six tackles, six clearances, five around fifties. What do you make of his game, Josh? This kid is a gun. Absolute gun. Well, I, I am still regretting Essendon. Uh, not <laughs> well, who was that that you picked ahead of him? No, I'm not going. Say, who was it that you no, Nick, Nick, who we're, talk, we're him? talking about Sydney. Was Larry Stanford? It was oh, Larry Stanford. Stanford. Um, okay. Luke Parker was absolutely terrific. His influence on the game was absolutely huge. Uh, speaking of which, Kieran Jack was also brilliant. Uh, nine tackles, five inside 50s in it. Oh my goodness, nine tackles. He's just, he's, it's that rugby background that shines through for Kieran Jack again and again. Yeah, well, he hasn't ruled that movie out, has he? He hasn't, no, but he, I doubt he will. But okay. he's, you know, he's an excellent gun footballer. He obviously had the Crowley tag reflected in his lower disposal numbers, but he made up for it with nine tackles and, you know, a goal, a couple of score assists. He was still imposing himself for the contest, and that's why he's such a gun. This is what I like about the Sydney midfield. If they're not winning the ball, they're doing the defensive work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that a number of times throughout the season. Yep. Uh, that, that's why this midfield is one of, the, one of if not the best midfield. Well, they realise it, don't they? The best footballs in the AFL realise probably at half-time, well, you know, I'm not going to have another 30 disposal two-goal yep. haul today. Yep. So my role needs to change, and the yep. best footballers do that. Yep. And this is what Kieran Jack has done. We saw Travis Boak do it on the weekend, so it's good to see that from Kieran um, Nick Smith, defensively for Sydney, has been oh. great all year. He went at 96% efficiency for Sydney uh, against Fremantle from 25 disposals, which is absolutely crazy. Kept Hayden Ballantyne fairly quiet uh, two weeks ago. Well, to be fair, Ballantyne went off with a broken jaw at one yes. stage, but up until that point, he was yeah, keeping yeah. him quiet. But yeah. uh, he was picked in all our team of the years that you'll see on News and Views. Make sure you check that out. Mm -hmm. um, thoroughly deserved. Uh, he was absolutely fantastic. Oh, well, two contested marks as well, might I add. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lewis Jetta is a player who's been up and down this season and in uh, recent seasons. But he finished with 70 inside 50s, and he was probably one of their best on the day. He, he hasn't really captured that 2012 form where they won the flag. He's warming up, though, isn't he? He, he is warming up. Oh, he's the, hitting at the right time. Does he leave for September, Josh? Uh, we'll see this week. <laughs> we'll see this week. But um, when he gets in space, he's obviously very, very exciting to watch. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing North Melbourne have to watch. Uh, yeah. If Lewis Jetta gets into space, it's, it's game over. Well, he's the kind of player that, although he may not be in his superb form of 2012... 
He's the kind of player that even so, even still, you can't bank on that. Yeah. You can't bank on him being like, oh, you know, Jetter, he's not in the best of form. He'll, you know, we'll be Don't okay. worry about him. Yeah. yeah, you can't do that because he's the kind of guy that you see here. He'll cut you up on his He's, he's the type of player that reminds me of someone like a Stephen Hill from Fremantle, or Daniel Wales from Mott Mott from Geelong. Mott yeah. Mott from Geelong that can just do something special to change the course yep. of the game. Yep. Surreoli as well, throw in there. Just do something to change the game. And yep. Lewis Jett is one of those players. Guys, we're talking about the bottom six players of the club needing to stand up to win a final, um, win those really tough games. Jake Lloyd was absolutely terrific mm, for yep. Sydney. Um, he had 24 disposals, seven marks, four tackles. He did it all uh, against Fremont. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I cannot believe that this kid has come in and, and slotted in so perfectly. How many games has he played from now? You know? uh, 16, I think. Okay, yeah. 16, so... Uh, he won a uh, NAB Rising Star nomination during the year. He's come through that Sydney Swans Academy. Um, they're going to get another one this year in Isaac Heaney. Oh, he's, he's an 18. absolute freak, uh, that kid. This, I've watched him. While, while they've oh, got goodness. this academy, um, it's proving one. It's really one. just it's driving me nuts. Where, um, where do these kids bob up from and why are they all localised? It's, the, it's the time and development that they put but into But why them. are they all in New South Wales? Where, what, are, what is it's it? It's the breeding ground. Some of the best come from there. He's an absolute gun, Jake Lord. He's just moulded into that Sydney kind of shape, hasn't he? Yeah. And you mentioned Isaac Heaney. We'll get into you know him more in the pre-season stuff that we'll be doing, but he's an absolute star, boys. Yeah. Um, two more players we'll have a quick mention to. Um, ben McGlynn came back on that side. Four clearances, three goals. He was terrific. And Lance Franklin um, almost broke that game apart, as he always threatens to do when he doesn't. He had seven marks and kicked three goals, three. Just before we go into North Melbourne, boys, Nick Malcheski are likely out for Sydney with that hamstring. Yep. Um, <laughs> he's probably about oh, 30, 70 at this stage. Still a rough would, chance, but... Would Tom Mitchell squeeze in that side? Like, oh, I, know, I, know, surely. I know Malcheski is like a oh, rebounding no. back defender, but... I don't care, to be honest. Surely Tom Mitchell will find a way to come back into that you'd, side. You'd think so. I mean, he, won, he was best on ground in the Nafield Grand Final. Well, he won the medal. Absolutely phenomenal, by the way. Hey. Watch that last quarter today. That was... Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I think what's called the John Island medal, is it not? Andrew Island. Andrew Island. He had 30 disposals, 10 tackles, 11 clearances. Yeah. He was absolutely yeah. fantastic. You'd think he'd be the man to come in, but like, Shane Biggs, Brandon, Jack and Dean Towers are all very this good. This stage of the season, you don't want to be changing your structure for a pre- prelim final, but I think you'd make an exception to bring an extra midfielder in when he's in that kind of form yeah. as Tom Mitchell is. So you've got to bring Tom Mitchell in. Moving, I don't care what you say. He could be, he could be <laughs> oh my goodness. Moving in on to North Melbourne, boys. Uh, they defeated Geelong by six points on the weekend. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> What did you make of it, boys? I thought North Melbourne, um, their start was really the key to that game. Yep. They absolutely exceptional in that first quarter. Lindsay Thomas was terrific. We'll get touch on him in a sec. But they almost put the cue in the rack a little bit early in that game. They certainly did. Uh, the hearts were in mouths, and Brad Scott was very, very nervous yep. uh, in that last five or so minutes that his team were going to give up the lead. But <laughs> they managed to hang on. And North Melbourne... Well, he's, well, he's been in that situation North a few Melbourne times. North Melbourne the team. <laughs> well and truly known yeah. for giving up leads... Huge comebacks, ridiculous kind of Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But they hang on, and they thoroughly deserve the win. Uh, at the at the end of the night, despite the small margin, yeah. North Melbourne were far well, away the better side. Well, I'm sure at the end, Brad Scott would have had images of Nick Nat haunting him there. Yes, that, absolutely. He would have had that. But um, anyway, a man who was absolutely yeah. key, um, he was playing against Witches Hats, but that's irrelevant, because he was absolutely key regardless, was Todd Goldstein. He had 54 hitouts to go with his 15 disposals. He also had five tackles, five clearances, three into 50s and a goal. And well, three contested. Yeah. Well, and one of them was the match saver probably the match saver we yeah. spoke about it last week that Goldstein's going to come up against Mark Blixavs and who was the other one Josh Walker, uh, Josh Walker yeah. um, mm. it, we knew that this Todd Goldstein would want to take advantage straight away and that he and did he, did. he yeah. had I think early on in the first five minutes he had six hit outs and four touches yep. he got his hands on the ball early and said I'm going to take this game by the scruff well, well Tom and Goldstein he set them up from the beginning he skipped dinner that night you know why why? Because he was full after that performance. <laughs> he'd had his he'd had his fill after of Mark Blitzars and Josh Walker after that performance, but <laughs> eating them for dinner. He was he was spectacular from the word go. Um, and I think his his game was epitomised by the match saving Mark at the end. Yeah. Um, did what a ruckman does best, and that's taking a contested going mark back and, yeah. in a vital situation like that. Um, Nick Del Santo really stood up when it mattered. Um, he's absolutely um, relishing the chance to play some more finals football he, at North. So right, he annoys how's, me, how's Nick his, Del Santo. Yeah, how, how's his decision to go from St Kilda to North? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's worked out pretty. <laughs> bloody well he's an absolute superstar probably worked out better than um, Ben McAvoy's decision to leave St Kilda he, he was good but he's just a player that as a, if you're an opposition supporter Nick Dale said is the one that'll annoy you yeah. because he always manages to find space he always manages to get the uncontested ball but I think he will this week against Sydney no and he always uses it well yeah. so he's that, he's just that perfect player but you're right Sydney would be fools he, to let him he know. reminds me a lot of Lewis Jetta 
in the sense if you give him space, he's going to hurt you. But he's not as quick. Oh, obviously not. Yeah, but obviously a completely the, different type of player. Yeah, the same kind of concept. You're right. Yeah, you're different right. aspects, but they'll hurt you well, if you give them space. Well, what he yeah. loses in his pace, he makes up well in his in kicking his accuracy. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's 77% efficiency, eight marks, four clearances, six in fu- inside fifties, five rebounds in the weekend. Absolutely terrific. Absolutely terrific. And another that's, man, that six inside fifties and five rebounds showed how well he covered the ground. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And um, he's he's 32 or something, but you yeah. would not tell looking at him. A man who really surprised me had a huge impact on the game was Sam Gibson. 35 disposals, eight marks, five tackles, six clearances, six inside fifties. He worked all over the ground as well. Has not missed a game since Debut. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier in the year. He yeah. hasn't. No, he hasn't, and he, he was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, slips under the radar on most sides. He can play a run with Wall. Uh, we see here run 34. With Wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll spit it out. But uh, 35 disposals, 15 contested. He can get the ball as well. Yeah. Well, he played on the other wing, and he just dominated. And wobble, wobble, oh, yeah. Levi Greenwood the second one again. did go to Joel Selwood. Oh, I don't remember. He did. One. He did. And Sam Gibson, you said, could tag Selwood. He didn't. And if I, he did, there's I something severely wrong with Selwood's ability to hold his tag account. <laughs> I honestly did not see... Well, having, leaving that around. aside, we'll move on, because I've had my wobble. <laughs> Brett Harvey, he has done something stupid again, boys. We're not sure if these stats are going to be relevant or not this week, because he may or may not be playing. Probably what you, Joey, be, I would say. What is, your, uh, what is your determination? He's an idiot. <laughs> well, what is, your, what is your determination whether he will play this week or not? I, I can't see how he can get off. Yeah. To be honest, he's got 40 carryover points. He's got 10% loading. What is loading? What is this concept of loading? Can you explain it to the viewers? You base, so say you got 10% loading. Yes. You get 10% more points. Well, I, I, how, I, I think, think that's affected by how many suspensions he's had in yeah. the past. I see. I um, see. We saw a similar one with Steve Johnson. See, Jake, Jake Zabel You've got the well. carryover points from the most recent incident or the most recent two incidents. I see what you mean. Yeah. Loading's over a longer period of time. You know, you've yeah. constantly got suspensions. And he obviously drew blood, didn't he? He did. Uh, I believe that's how it works. Man, he's drawing got, blood from Joel Selwood is about as... Yeah, that eyebrow is like... <laughs> holy. <laughs> Just before we move on, he's got 40%... He's got 40 carryover points. He's got 10% loading. Yep. Um... It was high contact. He drew blood. I don't care if Salwood's got... Uh, well, to be fair, a skin. zephyr of wind could probably draw blood from the library. Care. I don't care. He's drawn blood. Yep, it was yep, off yep. the ball. It was head high contact. I cannot see how he plays this week. Um, he's, he's, he's done a foolish thing because he played well. 25 yeah. touches at 92% efficiency. 60 inside 50s. He'll be vital if he does play. A goal. He'll be kicking score himself assist. if he doesn't. Anyway, yep. we're going to move on. Drew Petrie took seven marks, uh, three inside fifties, four goals, four. Really was let off the chain in that game. And Jack Zebel was terrific once again. Um, not so much as a midfielder, only had 13 disposals. But six marks, eight tackles, really worked his way into that game. Finished with two goals and two scores. Well, I really think... Clutch goals. I think Brad Scott is getting the best out of him now, yep. finally. Yep. Because they've experimented with him in the midfield. They've experimented with him on a wing, like yep. half back. This is where he belongs, I think. On this half-forward kind of role. Yeah. He's doing kind of like what Robbie Gray or Luke Parker would do, but yeah. he tackles really well and he kicks goals. Drew Petri, I thought it was his most dominant game for the year, to yeah. be honest. Uh, he was... Oh, he's a confidence player. And yeah. you see yeah. when he kicks he it, when he takes a good mark and kicks it early. He really game, gets it. As he did he? in the first couple of minutes. Um, and then North Melbourne had that kind of call. You just knew it was an odd night for him. Yeah. Jamie McMillan's a 50-50 chance with that hamstring as well. He yep. did train today, but it was very ginger. Yep. So 50-50... Lockie Hanson, Lee Adams, Aaron Mullet, Ben Jacobs, all the chance to come in. And so is Joel Tippett, which would be interesting because he interesting. may play on his brother. Is and that his brother, is it? Yes. Yep. Okay. And I said I was going to mention him. Lindsay Thomas was absolutely exceptional in that first quarter. I think he kicked three, three. goals yep. in the first quarter. I'm one. going to make a guess and say, a very obvious guess and say Nick Smith will have the job yep. on him. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Um, well, speaking of the matchups there, we'll move on to them now. Um, the first one, Cunningham, do we think will verse Wells there? Yeah, absolutely. I think Cunningham's got the pace to go with Wells. Yep. He has played a run with Roll this run with Roll this year. I'll get that out eventually tonight. Um, Hang on. Cunningham on Wells? Yes. Okay. Thank Harry you. Cunningham. For a second, I thought you were saying Cunnington on no, Wells. Not, not like, Cunnington. Have we made Cunningham. a big move here? Harry Cunningham <laughs> for Sydney, number seven. Yep. Thank goodness for that. Continue. <laughs> I know he's not on the ball right now. But you can see it's a pretty easy mistake. He's, yeah. he's, got, he's got the pace to go with Wales. Uh, Wales in the last two weeks, uh, I know he tore us up. He yep. didn't have quite the same impact against Geelong, but I thought he was still very, very good. Uh, he gets into space. He's going to hurt you. Nick Del Santo, who probably have bird for company. Yeah, uh, Sydney have got a lot of run with players. Uh, they've got some of like Cunningham. They have a lot of them, yeah. yeah. Kieran Jack can go head to head. Exactly yep. right. But Craig Bird's a bigger body, and I think get the bigger body on Nick Del Santo. Uh, tackles may hurt a bit more. Uh, earn the free kick or earn a kick, really. 
Uh, Craig Bird, I think, will be the man to go to win. Lance Franklin in some terrific form at the moment. Always a key matchup. Probably Nathan Graham will get the job. Oh, boy. Well, I, a, lot, I, a lot of people say Scott Thompson will go to win. Yeah, but I honestly believe Nathan Graham will. Nathan Graham has taken the key forward the last couple of weeks. And, he's and Scott fun. Thompson has relished in this role of playing this rebound defender. Yeah. And it's worked for them. What do you think about that? I honestly do not think they can let Grima play on Franklin. To no. Be honest. No. If they want to win this game, Nathan Grima must not play on Lance Franklin. I'll go as far to say that. Okay. okay. Because, first of all, Kurt Tippett has not been in the greatest of form. We know how capable he is, but I think Grima would be much more suited to him. Second of all, Grima so far, Joe Danaher kicked four on him. His career high, if I'm not wrong, Josh. Yep. yep. Then Tom Hawkins mauled him and kicked five on him. Yep. I don't think you can now say, well, he's had four kicked on him by a youngster, a kid that's never kicked four before. Then he's had five kicked on him by a guy who's not known to kick big bags. Let's go and play him on the number one forward in the AFL who's been known to kick an excess of six goals. You probably make a fair point. Yeah, it's well, just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't connect. And Scott Thompson has got That is a fair point. Yep. And it, Hall, uh, going back to Buddy's Hawthorne days, yep. he has kicked 13 against this back line. So. Yeah, so again, you know, I think Scott Thompson... He's that a good was different. on Thompson. It was, but having said that, after that, Thompson had played on yep. Buddy and kept and him kept to respectable him. totals. So. Zero. To zero. So there you go. I, Twice. You, Twice in a row. Thank you. So you must play Thompson on ha- Having said all that, um, you said Thompson is l- l- um, relishing, I was going yeah. to say, um, this halfback rebounding role that he's playing more of. Um, North Melbourne are really going to need to take some risks if they want to beat Sydney in Sydney as they're playing. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of risk, that's the kind of brave move. Rather than going with the obvious option of putting your best key defender on the best forward, yep. um, letting him run away and try to uh, impact on the game attacking... Could be a real option for See, him. I think Scott Thompson can do that anyway. Yep. I think the best key backs do that anyway. You look at the guys like Cal Hooker, you know, Eric McKenzie, Harry Taylor, they all make their opponent accountable by getting up the ground and getting disposals. Yep. So I think he should do that anyway. That's the risk that they should be taking, not the kind of risk where let's put this guy on, you know, Franklin. So Kurt Tippett, he'll have um, whichever of Grimer or Thompson. Grimer or Thompson, who doesn't play on Franklin. Whoever doesn't play on Franklin. See, I think yeah. this is at a stage. During the premiership season, they may be like, we've got to show confidence in Grimer. Yeah. But you're at a stage now where you can't do that. Yeah. You can't take gambles like that. Well, Tippett's not in um, crazy good form exactly. like Franklin is yep. at the moment, but he has the ability to break away, kick six or seven goals. Yeah. I um, think putting Grimer on Tippett is a far less risk than yeah. putting Grimer on Franklin. Definitely. Okay. Um, Sam Reid's another one they have to worry about. Probably Lockie yeah. Hanson, the third man. Yep. Yeah, Lock, Lockie Hanson is a certainty to come in. Correct. Um, Correct. Brad Scott's pretty confident that he'll play. So yep. uh, he's, he's a very good player. He'll, he'll take Sam Reid for sure. Yep. Um, Adam Goods. Michael Ferrito, for me, perfect build to take him. Perfect build. He's got, Ferrito's actually deceptively quick, believe it yeah. or not. He's not as slow as people think he is. He's got good closing pace. But he's going to have to be on his game. Adam Good's playing game 350. He's going yeah. to want to have a massive, he'll massive be up input in this game. So, he'll, as you say, he'll be up and about. And then up the other end of the ground, the North Melbourne forwards, um, Drew Petrie coming off a brilliant game, probably one of his best well, four in the season. three, I think. Yep. Um, we'll be up against Ted Richards, do we think? Mm. R- Richards or Grundy? Yep. Why not? Why well, they're both very miserly. Yeah. They don't tend to give away too many. Well, uh, same, same as Franklin with um, Grimer and Thompson. You'll see Grundy or Richards go to either Petrie yep. or Brown. Yep. So. And you've got big, big Ben Brown to worry about. You can't let him get off the chain. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need that seriously, to be honest. He will get off the chain <laughs> and hurt you and sting you. I had Harry Taylor for company on the weekend, which was an absolute um, bit, a, bit, of a ch- bit of a change from a, a, bit third, of a yeah. third game into a th- uh, Taylor two grabbed him by the big afro and pulled him back down to earth and said hang on there big Benny we're going to sort um, things down Lindsay Thomas as we said probably Nick Smith will follow oh, him around oh, yeah. that, that's almost so, a certainty of the world. no it's not a certainty what is it Josh it's a Monty there we go <laughs> uh, last make that a second <laughs> Josh's Monty of the week Last of all, next year. Yeah, we'll um, Aaron Black, we know, will play forward. But uh, Jack Siebel is known to play forward in recent weeks. And Dean Rampey will probably have the job on whichever one of those. Yeah, Ra- time. Rampey's taken a, a big key forward in recent weeks. Yeah. Uh, he took Jack Rewalt in the last round. So he can play that role. Uh, I think, he, yeah, Black or Siebel will well, get down there. Siebel's actually, to me, a more potent forward than Black right now. Yeah. Because he's marking it better. He's yeah. it, Correct me if I'm wrong, but he's actually such a good contested mark. It's... Well, so he's similar to Nathan Fife. He is. Respect. He yep. is. Yeah, and so I actually see him as more. Of a he's actually. Mark. He's actually a good pack mark, not just yeah. like a one-on-one contested mark. Excellent, Nick. Yeah. yeah, he will come in. He's such a high jump on him. Yeah, takes strong pack marks, which yeah. is so valuable for a player yeah. of his size. And he's quick. And that you think of as a midfielder. Yeah. yeah. So that's why Ramp is seeing season. that potential. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> moving into our predictions for the first preliminary final. Who wants to start us off? You can. You can. I, so got him, I got him first. See you later. <laughs> I better start then. Um, <laughs> guys, I just 
I just cannot go past Sydney in Sydney, even though it's an ANZ. You've got to take the emotion of North Melbourne uh, beating Essendon and beating Geelong to get to this point. I just think Sydney is going to be far too strong in this game. I've tipped them by 31 points. Um, I think Tippett will kick four. Lance Franklin will kick six. Ooh. What's your final margin? Well, 31 score. was the margin I was going to say. 30 round? Uh, look, to me, boys, I think... Uh, oh, well, I was going to say something really important now. I've forgotten it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ANZ Stadium is not Sydney, as far as I'm concerned. Because the way Sydney play there doesn't suggest to me that it's their home ground at all. They play, you know, ANZ Stadium, you may tell me it's in China, and I believe you. Because there doesn't really seem to be any home ground advantage. Sydney don't like playing there. They're forced to play there again. A lot of their upsets happen there. So I'm not going to buy into that. But I do think that Sydney have had a week off. And Sydney's not the team you want to come into off two very close, you know. I think North are going to be tired. Yep. They're going to be emotionally exhausted, physically exhausted. Sydney's, you know, fresh and ready. And I think there's a mismatch in the defence here. I back Sydney's defence to keep North shut up. But I don't think North, who have considered a lot of goals in the last two weeks, believe it or not, yep. can keep this deadly, deadly, deadly poisonous forward line quiet. And I'm tipping Sydney by 40 points. Well, we should mention North Melbourne's never played at ANZ Stadium before. Well, so. this is... I was just going to make that point. Um, you say playing at Sydney, it's not that much of an advantage playing yep. at ANZ. I think Sydney are obviously smarter than to go, we're not happy playing here, you know. Yep. Yep. Obviously, they've trained here a lot. That's a good um, point. They've, yep. played, they've played here a significant amount of time. Obviously, they've crowd advantage and reasons like that, yeah. Yep. Um, they've played here a significant amount of times in recent seasons for it to be a little bit of a home ground correct, advantage correct, at least. Um, obviously, the surface is terrible, but that affects yep, both teams. Yep. North Melbourne, as I said, um, they've never played there. Never played there. So, obviously, there's a bit of an advantage. Actually, Josh, you were saying this is going to be raining, isn't it? It is. Then I might scale back my tip to about 25 points because okay. I, see, I can't see them, you know, kicking if, them. Just, just if it's wet. If it's wet. If it's yeah. going to be wet, you know, they tend to be close again. Okay. So, about 20, 25 points. Josh? Uh, yeah, I'll be tipping the Swans. Uh, if North can get a fast start, then... Who knows? I, who knows? Who Give knows? a chance. Same thing happened against Geelong. Richmond. Yep. Uh, Richmond as well. Richmond went up there at ANZ, got a fast start and won the yeah. game. So you know, Regardless of who was out for the opposition, they Correct. got a fast start, they held the lead, they won the game. Yep. North Melbourne can do the same. Who knows? Correct. Uh, but, yeah, just Sydney for me. Coming off the win, uh, coming off the break, sorry. Yep. Uh, they're fresh, they're ready to go. Uh, just too much on the line for what it's silly to say. Uh, too much on the line for Sydney uh, in this game. I think they'll progress into next week's grand final. Um, it is going to be wet. I, t- I expect it to be a wet, hard slog. Um, but, yeah, just Sydney far too strong by 15 points. That brings us to the end of our preview for the first preliminary final. There's a link to the second preliminary final preview and news and views at the end of this video. Make sure you check them out. Thanks very much for watching. Good luck.